Okay, this is going to be Unit 3 SOL review, and this will be the last unit before we got to Unit 4 with cell membrane and our grades tanked. If you remember, the unit tests were in the high 70s, mid 70s, which I guess in the bell curve, um, that's good, but it didn't meet uh, your press the past three units, one, two, three, and as well as five, and I'm hoping forward to six as well. But anyway, this one's going to be on cells. And we got to start with cells. We got to talk about the science history and the cell scientists. And we had Robert Hooke, and he's the one who actually comes up with the terminology for the word cell based on the rooms in his abbey. Uh, I think this was 1665, and he gets a microscope, very primitive one, but he gets to look at cells in a cork wood. And then we go to Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and he's 1875, so 10 years later. Uh, microscope gets a little better. He develops the microscope because he's an obstetrician, and he actually starts seeing protists in water. And then we go to Schleiden. Schleiden actually uh, looks like quite a few years, 150 years-ish. And he's going to start looking at plant cells, and he'll start seeing that plants are made up of cells. And then Schwann comes in, 1839, next year, and actually sees that animals are made of cells. And then uh, Rudolf Virchow actually comes in, and he starts seeing uh, organelles inside of cells, but he also starts coming up with the finalized cell theory. So, how did the cell theory come in? Oh, I've actually got to show you pictures. Uh, which one's which? You tell me. So, the cell theory. Um, the old cell theory were, was stated by Schwann. He comes up with all organisms are made of one or more cells. So we have single cell creatures and multi-cell creatures. Cells are the basic building blocks of all life. Got to have cells to be alive. And then virtue actually comes in and says all cells come from existing cells. This is the old view. There's the old microscope that uh, Leeuwenhoek got to use. And now we have a cell theory with two new things, and the, what we had to come up with was technologies, better microscopes and better science. All living things made up of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit structure or function of life. Cells are all come from pre-existing cells, and then the two new ones, cells contain heredity information uh, that's passed on from the daughter cell to the parent cell during cell division, and that's in the nucleus, the chromosomes and cells are the basic, are basically the same chemically composition wise. So when we talk about the five uh, chinop, or the six chinops, uh, the elements that go into the four biological molecules, um, it's all the same. So the next thing you were supposed to do is to get a picture of a animal cell and a plant cell and go in from the, like the nucleolus and the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth and the rough, vacuoles, cytoskeletons, Golgi apparatus, centrioles, mitochondria, ribosomes, cell membrane, cytosol, you were supposed to color and label these. And the same thing for a plant cell, the big central vacuole, but still has a nucleolus and a nucleus, still has endoplasmic reticulum, smooth and rough, still has free-floating ribosomes, still has mitochondria, um, I'm sorry, those are chloroplasts, still has mitochondria, now has chloroplasts, and not only the cell membrane, but also has a cell wall with the cytoplasm. Um, I also gave you another table right there, which you, I'll put the link on the video, but basically it comes up with the material uh, that's there as well as the membrane, whether it's a membrane bound organelle or not, uh, components and function. And you're, I think you're, you may even have to list the function of the things that once you find them. Then it's eukaryotic, the true nucleus versus prokaryotic, before nucleus. These are not really showing you size wise but you can see it's got the information that's on there. It's got a couple things labeled for you. Uh, it's definitely an animal cell because of the round shape. And then when we actually get to prokaryotic cells, we actually get nucleoids. Um, it's, it's a nuclear region, but it's not really membrane bound like a nucleus. It still has ribosomes because it still has to be able to make proteins. Um, may have flagella for moving around, but it's surrounded by a capsule as well as a cell wall and the cell membrane. So it's actually got some different setups of the, from the eukaryotic cells.
even from the plants. This one I showed you in the regular PowerPoint, and this was to give you size-wise. Um, the prokaryotic cells are very small. They end up being about the same size as this mitochondria right here, or if we had a plant cell, the, pro the chloroplast, and that was that whole um, Lynn Margulis thing where we actually had uh, endo, uh, end endocytosis, where we invited mitochondria and chloroplasts in. Uh, the plant cells kept the chloroplasts, we lost those. And uh, what we said was we would give this mitochondria everything that needed to survive, and all we asked is that it gave us some of its ATP. In fact, um, all of its, almost all of its ATP. And then if we take a look at a real cell. This is why these diagrams look so much better. You can see that you have, do have mitochondria, probably have ribosomes in there. Um, it does have centrioles. Uh, it does have more mitochondria, has a nucleus. I don't really see a nucleolus, although it uh, could be in this lighter area. Kind of lots, lots of cytosol. And does have some uh, lysosomes for dissolving material inside uh, that it does not want. And then the prokaryotic, which actually does have a capsule on the outside, has a cell wall as well as a cell membrane, lots of centrioles, probably ribosomes. Um, Lot, I'm sorry, lots of, uh, I said centrioles, cytosol, so I should just say so, cell so plasma. Um, and then it does have a nucleoid, the region. Um, the, remember the DNA is looped in this one where it's um, not looped in this one. Other things talking about cell size, so we actually have an ostrich egg, which is uh, almost a tenth of a meter big. Go to a frog egg and a human egg. Um, now we're talking like millimeters into micrometers. And then we go to chloroplast, which is one, same size as most of the bacteria. And this one will actually say that uh, mitochondria and bacteria are the same size. Plant and animal size, much larger. And then the organism, even larger. And this one actually throws in a blue whale, the largest, which looks like it's about 30 meters big. Uh, football field issue. Then you were supposed to use a uh, Venn diagram and put prokaryotic on one, eukaryotic the other, and both, and tell me minimum five unique points for each of these sections, and I'm not going to go through the five. Um, I'd like you to go through the notes or better yet your reviews and actually find that, but there is a site here where I actually showed you these uh, when we actually did the Cell City where we talked about list of the membranous and the non-membranous bound organelles. Oh, and I can't believe I just clicked it because I just said I wasn't going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can pause this. Okay, we're back. Okay, so you can click these, and again, I will put this link in the comments, but what I'd really like you to do is to go to your study guides or your notes. You can always go back to YouTube, too. And then you were supposed to tell me the differences between a plant and an animal cell, um, similarities that they've got, but the differences as well. And I've got a Spark Notes that I, um, you can probably look this up. In fact, there's the link right there if you want to type it in. I've decided not to put the links on there. And the last part, talking about stem cells, which don't have any idea what they want to get and chemicals that your body um, actually is an embryo uh, put on it and start making either muscles or blood cells or nerve cells or cardiac liver or intestines, the type of cells that make up your body. And then we actually have the six types of chemicals that are in there. Um, remember CHINOPS, and they come in and they make molecules, monomers and polymers, and those come in to make cells, and cells come in to make tissue, and tissue makes organs, and organs make organ systems, and organ systems make organelles. Okay, and that's it for Unit 3. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Adios.